Howdy friends, Tadas here with Insomniac Next Door. I'm recording this video in hopes to save you a ton of pain and suffering. And uh, I've, my health fell apart a few years ago and it took me years to realize that I'm dealing with heavy metal toxicity. In, in the process, uh, I've discovered there's a lot of bad information online that uh, I unnecessarily had to suffer because of it. And uh, some of it is just plain, plain down dangerous. And in this video, I'll discuss uh, why some people get toxic, why some don't. And I'll share, I'll share with you five major painful mistakes that uh, one uh, can make in trying to uh, detox or chelate uh, heavy metals from the body. So stay with me for a few minutes and I hopefully you'll learn a lot. So first of all, you might be asking yourself, uh, why, why, why some people get toxic? Why some have amalgam fillings and uh, you know, are fine and some get really, really badly damaged and sick? And um, in my case, I had myself uh, five amalgam fillings, which uh, are known to um, uh, contain mercury. And uh, of course, the scientists and the doctors are debating whether they're uh, harmful or not. For me, it's not even a question. And I've, I've, I've met thousands of people online and forums to know that, uh, that uh, amalgam fillings are a source of toxicity. But there's plenty of different sources of toxicity of, of heavy metals around us. And uh, some of us uh, do a better job at detoxing and some uh, are great at accumulating them. And uh, I'm one of them. I'm, one, I'm, I'm the lucky one who won the lottery. So, first of all, there, there's, uh, the answer is, is, is quite simple. And it really uh, it has to do with uh, environmental factors and our genetics. There's a study out there on the um, uh, natural and synthetic neurotoxins in our environment. I'll put a link in the comments. They pretty much summarize that large population studies have recently analyzed the potential contribution of variability in global gene expression patterns, including the impact of genetic mutations to human genetic individuality, phenotype, susceptibility to disease, and related genotype parametrics. Some of the major recent results of these studies indicate that the presence of environmentally or genetically influenced gene expression patterns which give individuals or certain human populations characteristic genotypes and phenotypes. Hence, depending on the gene uh, genotypic and the phenotypic considerations, certain individuals or population groups may be chronically predisposed to the multiple effects of neurotoxic and genotoxic agents over the course of a lifetime. Right? So depending on where we live, what kind of genes we get, what kind of expressions are manifesting, in the, in the genetics, uh, uh, certain group of people will tend to accumulate toxins and suffer very, very badly. So heavy metals like mercury, mercury get stored in the fatty tissue, liver, gut, brain, nervous system, thyroid, and causes like a plethora of confusing and debilitating symptoms, which is what happened to me. I've been chasing my tail for years trying to find the answer here. And um, uh, uh, it can take up to 20 years for the, <laughs> for the mercury to leave the body uh, if, if it's not being chelated or uh, uh, you know, cleared. And that's given you, you're getting no additional exposure. Like you got some exposure and no more, but usually we keep re-exposing ourselves. So uh, the five huge mistakes to avoid, and this is something I've gathered through the years of reading online on forums and talking to people <clears throat> of course yours truly right so number one you do wrong tests i did uh, a urine test and i did uh, a, a, a very poor hair test and they all came back like i'm fine you know there's no heavy metal issues here so inaccurate tests will lead you down the wrong road and uh, a simple blood test shows only <clears throat> a recent exposure. So if you've been exposed recently in large amounts, it will show up. If not, it won't show up. So um, you need to do a specialized hair test that shows a deranged mineral transport. Basically, a, a hair test will show indicators of heavy metal toxicity, not a direct elevated levels of, of uh, 
uh, of heavy metal. So it's very tricky and that's why most people miss it and they move on to some other adventures looking for uh, other diseases. So number two, uh, not removing the, the sores before detoxing. And that's a huge one. Like if you have, uh, I, you know, I, I was expecting heavy metals before, but I had these amalgam feelings. I didn't ex expect that they would be causing slowly uh, evaporating mercury. And uh, I almost took some improper chelators, detox agents that would have really hurt me. So if, you're, if you have an ongoing exposure, you better not try to detox those heavy metals because you will, you will only pull from the source and redistribute in the body. So that's number two. Don't try to detox unless you're absolutely clear uh, that you don't have any, any more exposure if within you or outside of you. Uh, number three is using bad methods, wrong methods and wrong chelators or wrong detox agents. And using wrong chelators, uh, like for example, like some, I, I don't want to name names, but there's some big shot doctors out there on the internet. If you Google how to detox heavy metals, the number one thing, what they will say is cilantro, right? Uh, which is, ah, I mean, it's absolutely crazy to recommend cilantro just because they're out of touch with reality, these doctors, and they're out of touch with people that actually have tried the cilantro and what kind of results they get. I mean, and uh, the other one is chlorella, and then they recommend all these like uh, uh, high sulfur foods like onions, garlic, all this, all this stuff. But uh, like when I t take that, I mean, I'm like ready to die the next day. So it's an absolutely awful advice to, to give to people that are mercury toxic, but are realizing the whole, understanding the whole scope of the toxicity and what mercury does. Like for example, mo uh, a third of people that are heavy metal toxic will, will have uh, a very adverse reactions to all these uh, sulfur rich foods that have this so-called thiols, right? So, uh, for example, I'm quoting from the forum. Uh, somebody, uh, uh, a, nutritionist, a nutritionist suggested that I juice cilantro several times a day. Within a day I was feeling a different level of terrible and within a week I thought I was going to lose my mind. I've been battling bone crushing, fatigue, brain fog, extreme food allergies, you know, the mineral deficiencies uh, for 25 years, but I never felt this crazy until cilantro. So I heed the warning, right? I mean, and there's like hundreds of this kind of accounts. I mean, what are they doing when they offer these things? Another one, cilantro must have more moved more mercury into my brain. I can't sleep. I usually get some sleep even on my worst day, but now I can't. I'd been getting seven hours on average again before eating cilantro. So that's another huge screw up, right? It can ruin your sleep even further by redistributing. Uh, it, it is a chelating agent. It's just an awful chelating agent because it, it picks it up and it redistributes. It doesn't transport it out of your body. So another wrong method is when you, uh, you may be suggested or find to use glut glutathione and especially injections, large amounts. And uh, again, from the forum, ACC, Andrew Cutler Forum, I'm totally bedridden since almost five years with progressive paralysis because of mercury heavy metals after taking massively glutathione. So that's crazy, right? I mean, there's people poisoning themselves with this really awful advice online. And um, uh, part of this, number three, is, is to not have, if we're not following a method or not following a protocol, right? And it's very dangerous because you're just gonna try some things, think some things are gonna backfire. I mean, one thing, you're gonna hurt yourself, possibly, right? Second thing, you even if you start moving metals, you're gonna freak out because it feels awful and you may quit, but that could have been a normal reaction. But what, there is no protocol and there is no nobody there to support you. And what do you know? I mean, you quit, so you move on to something else again, right? Uh, again, not understanding how heavy, heavy metals move through the body and how they detox uh, is a big mistake. So one last thing, avoid a provocation test. This is something where they will inject you with, like if they're, if they're not seeing clearly like heavy metal uh, signs in you, they will, they will inject or IV or whatever. Uh, D DMPS agent, which is basically going to 
stimulate uh, release mercury from uh, from tissues and and will carry it into your bloodstream and then you can pass it in the urine uh, I believe they check it and they will find it but here's the thing if you do a provocation test you're gonna be pulling more mercury out of your system but if your system is clogged if your detox organs are not working properly you're gonna take all these metals release them and then redistribute it heck knows where so be very careful with provocation tests, they're unnecessary and uh, if you do a proper hair test. Okay, now moving on. Number four, not supporting yourself with proper supplements. If you're moving metals and you don't know how to support your body, you're gonna suffer like crazy because it's very taxing on your body, it's very taxing on your organs and you're, you're gonna have neurological effects, you're gonna have all sorts of gut issues you're going to have insomnia, all sorts of things, and not really understand what's going on. So you need to learn how to support yourself. And there's protocols that indicate for things like magnesium, antioxidants, like vitamin C, vitamin E, and also zinc. Yes. Uh, so these are because when you're removing, detoxing or chelating heavy metals, you're going to be um, uh, removing flushing a lot of minerals as well so it's very very important to know how to replenish those um, if you're getting my point it, I mean I'm trying to communicate to be very very careful and do a lot of research and study up before you attempt this thing so uh, you need to really understand how to support your your organs uh, your heart your liver your digestion your adrenals in order to move the metals out properly and if you're in, in many of us, uh, are the, we have compromised detox, uh, detoxification systems. We need to really prop those up before we start moving heavy metals. But that's a whole different talk. Number five is food sensitivities. Oh my goodness, that's been caused me lots of insanity. I mean, I go shopping for food like an inspector with a big magnifying glass and stuff like that. And when I walk into some like cafeteria, everything's poison unless I hand pick a few ingredients. It's absolutely insane for me. But if, if you don't know uh, <clears throat> about your food sensitivities, you might be suffering unnecessary. For example, thiol sensitivity is a huge one for me. Thir a third, like I mentioned, a third of people that are mercury toxic will have uh, <clears throat> sensitivity to thiols. And... Um, and it's due to many reasons, like your liver could be overwhelmed, you could have methylation issues, you know, clogged, you know, methylation pathways and so on, and candida, SIBOs, I mean, there's so many different things that can be totally messing up your gut. It's absolutely amazing. So you need to really tailor your uh, supporting agents. And I'm, the worst part is I'm like, I have paradoxical reaction to almost all supplements out there. So I found, I have a few that I use, but that's a whole different video again in the future that I find very, uh, very useful. So final advice, do a ton of research before attempting to detox from uh, heavy metals. Uh, read uh, uh, people like Andrew Cutler books. Uh, join the Andrew Cutler detox uh, uh, group online. I find, I mean, the people are amazing there. Uh, speak with qualified doctors in your area, but make sure they're really, really, really qualified. Not some, some, some doc who doesn't know what they're doing and they'll talk you out of any detox and they'll, think, they'll tell you you're crazy anyways and send you to some neurologist and uh, prescribe an antidepressant. I mean, doctors are, are not the best source unless you really seek out a good professional. I mean, uh, there was a, an old lady here, but she passed away. I didn't meet her, but I heard good things about her. The shaman died. No, <laughs> she didn't pass the knowledge away. It's crazy, this thing in Lithuania. Anyways. In my next video, video, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you what I'm doing to detox from heavy metals, and I'll explain, explain different chelators, detox agents, and introduce supplements that I take and lifestyle that I had to implement in order to survive this mess. So, wow, hang in there. <laughs> okay, sleep well. Or if you're not, someday you will. Drop me a question. Uh, subscribe if you're if you wanna hang out more. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.